Anytime an A24 movie is coming out in theaters, I'm going to get pretty excited, no matter what it is about, because I can instantly know that the studio is going to put out something pretty unique. And, well, I just saw... I saw the TV glow, and uh, this is the case of so many great reviews and me walking out of the movie going, not my cup of tea. And overall feeling the film is pretty overrated and just... Again, I can understand the appeal, but it's just not something that jams with my vibe. And I'm very curious to hear what your guys' thoughts are if you went and checked out the movie. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Let me know down below. And with that said, jumping into this, if you don't know what this movie is about, it's about a classmate who introduces a teenager named Owen to a mysterious late-night TV show, a vision of a supernatural world beneath their own. In the pale glow of the television, Owen's view of reality begins to crack when a, the supernatural TV show is mysteriously canceled. I think that synopsis overall gets the basis of what the film is about but there is like a lot more to the movie and there's a lot that I personally don't understand. It is one of those movies that artistically I can look at one perspective and be like, yeah, that is a beautifully haunting and nightmare fever pitch dream that I think kind of relays to a lot of things that I remember watching as a kid. And to really start with those pros, I can heavily talk about in this film the nostalgic feeling of finding one of those cheesy old horror shows and watching it, whether it's on VHS or just on one of the old CRV TVs. And honestly, like some of the perspectives of what they're actually clamoring on to here reminds me of a lot of my childhood of finding these weird things and getting terrified and scared of them due to some of the cheesy and dumb imagery. And then going back later in your life and rewatching those things and being like, oh, this isn't that great. It's very cheesy. Why was I ever scared of these things? And it's always funny to kind of relay that. I think Courage the Cowardly Dog was like a big part of that where like some of the things in there used to terrify me. And then I go back and rewatch and it's not that scary anymore. Or like I used to be tired. Like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to admit this. I used to be like absolutely terrified of the hash slinging slasher episode from spongebob don't know why and i understand that those are like nothing close to this like there are so many other countless random shows that i watched as a kid that would probably relay more to this but that's kind of what this film reminded me of and i will say that like the tone and the vibe of the film is incredibly weird and also incredibly haunting while it is very cheesy looking like seeing like this tv show they watch and seeing like the mask of the supernatural villain it, it's cheesy but at the same time it like really gets under your skin the way that the director actually uses it and gives J jane showbron the biggest shout out for that i think jane's previous film we're all going to the world's fair kind of did the exact same thing that this film gave me the vibe of and that was another film that i personally again just didn't understand the hype about it's just jane's vibe and the way that they direct movies that's just not personally for me but there's a lot that really can get under your skin in both of those movies and primarily this one can really do that and if a film can get under my skin that doesn't mean that it is a great movie and we're going to talk about that a little bit more in my cons but that is one of the best parts about this movie alongside i thought the performances were pretty good i think justice smith in here is actually phenomenal this is actually one of the few performances of his where i watched and i'm like I kind of get the hype about him now. I feel like Justice Smith has shown up in a ton of things, but this is actually one of those things where I'm like, yeah, I get it. It's great to see Bridget Payne in here as well. I've loved her ever since I saw her back in Atypical, and I think she just continues to excel in each and every role she shows up in. Truthfully enough, that's kind of where my biggest pros for the film rely, and that's where I want to start jumping into my mixed aspects and my issues for the film. So starting with my mixed aspects, this is one of those films that, again, is just metaphor heavy. And usually I like like diving in and wanting to expand and touch into a movie and understand every single layer of it. This is one of those movies that, I just don't see myself rewatching. At times, it intrigued me with what it was trying to do and say, but then at the other point in time, there will be something that pulls me away and keeps me at arm's length from wanting to get into the vibe of the movie and understand what is going on. And it was very much a whiplash feeling where, like, you know, for this 20 minutes, I'm very into what they're doing, and then, like, the next 20 minutes, I'm like, 
all right, you lost me. And you can come out and say it like, Zach, I just don't think you understood the movie. And I'll tell you right now, I don't think I understood it either. I understand that there's a lot of metaphors in here. I know I understand there's a lot of parallels to certain things. And I understand that there's a lot of trippy shit in here that I actually think is really clever. Like the usage of like exposition and like mythology building, I thought was like fantastic. But all under the surface of that is again, things that are standing out. And I wish the film, while it has its story to tell, I wish it was just a little bit more front forward with some of its things. I understand wanting to watch a film that's challenging, but sometimes, again, it kept me at arm's length from trying to get into the vibe of everything. And sometimes it was just a little bit too weird for my taste, which is saying a lot because I like a lot of weird movies. And that's okay. Like, that's that's what A24 does. Sometimes you go into their movies and you love them. Sometimes you walk out of them and you're like, yeah, I, I just didn't get the hype. And that's kind of how I am with this movie, where the mixed aspect is it always kept me at arm's length. And my biggest issue with the movie, like, actually diving into my issues is I just didn't get it. And, again, that that's a me thing. That's not a you thing. But... The biggest point of frame in my mind and like the way that I kind of like watch movies now and specifically TV is life is so short and I like to look at movies and TV at a certain glare and view is that if I'm going to dedicate my time to going and watching a movie, I either need to be entertained, intrigued or interested to the point where I'm obsessed and thinking about the movie. And when the movie started, I, I genuinely thought I was going to be because like the cinematography is like immaculate. The the vibe of the movie is very unique. And I'm like, this could be like my next little obsession where maybe I don't understand every layer of the movie, but I'm like wanting to understand everything. And my biggest con is I left the movie not wanting to do that. I left the movie not caring to understand every layer. I'll be interested to talk about this movie with people, but I won't care to really dive into it all too much in the future. And personally, I feel like I'm going to end up forgetting about the movie besides the beautiful cinematography and some of like the weird imagery. I feel like I'm just going to forget about the movie. And with life being so short, it's one of those films that would I rather spend time with my family or would I rather rewatch this movie? Some people that you might be like, Zach, that's a pretty big ultimatum. But again, life is short. And for an hour and 40 minute movie, I got to choose one or the other. And I'm definitely going to choose my family. And I just don't have the intrigue to go back and watch this movie, which sucks so much. I wish I did. I wish I understood what so many of you guys liked about this movie. But with all that said, I'm going to give I Saw the TV Glow a C. Very much a mixed bag film for me, not one that I can personally fully recommend. I do think it is pretty overrated when it comes down to its ratings, but I will also say at the same point, I can understand if someone came to me and said, Zach, I think you are fucking stupid and crazy because this movie was everything I wanted. I'm happy for you. Trust me. I liked a lot in this movie, but there's a whole half of it that I just did not understand and was not intrigued enough to understand, which really sucks because for all the things I liked, I wish I did have that feeling. But of course, thank you so much again for watching this. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe and also go check out our podcast over on Into the Geek First on YouTube, Spotify, and iTunes. We talk a bunch more movies, games, and other things over there. And I hope to see you guys along for the ride on that. But of course, until next time, stay classy.